Hey there folks, Lenny Rudo here for Fish Talk Magazine. Today I have come to the Wolford store in Wolford, Maryland. We are a stone's throw from the Blackwater and there's some exciting fishing going on here, people. You know it, you might love them, you might hate them. Either way you wanna catch them, snakeheads. Okay now, David. The person out there watching this right now, he wants to come down here, he wants to catch a snakehead. Give me your number one best snakehead fishing tip. Number one best tip for me is a bobber and a minnow. A bobber and a big minnow. Even two minnows on the hook seem to work better than one. All right, we got our nice big jumbo bull minnow here. And I'm gonna put them on a jig head, in through the bottom lips, and out through the top, like so. Now tell me one thing, this is shallow water out here. How much line do we want between our bobber and our minnow? Um, the colder weather, you want to be a couple inches right off the bottom with your bobber. Maybe if you're in three foot of water, you want to be two and a half feet down. Um, the warmer as the water reaches 60s and 70s, anywhere from six inches to 12 inches under your bobber is, is good, you know, for them. They, um, they're pretty aggressive and when they're feeding, now they, it seems in these tidal waters that they do play the tide. They, they like certain tides other than other. Yesterday they hit for about three hours right in the middle of the day on the um, beginning of the incoming tide, and then they just shut down and you couldn't buy another one. So Kaz, tell me something. As a snakehead diehard, what's your favorite lure? My favorite lure is definitely the river to sea whopper plopper. That has probably been my most, this, this, this became my most effective bait once they released this bait over any other bait when they have a top water bite. I like chatter baits. A lot of guys like to use trailers on a chatter bait. Personally, a tip that I would pass along is if you're getting short strikes on a chatter bait, take your swim bait or take your trailer off the chatter bait and just throw the chatter bait. Now folks, I know many of you have heard to look for the fry balls. Look for the fry balls. Kaz, when you see the fry balls, what next? How do you catch those fish? So the easiest way to get the fish is to try to get a reaction out of the fish. You know, most of the parents are simply guarding fry. That's what they're doing. And they're going to guard those fry until they're big enough to eat. But they will swipe at a bait or try to push a bait away from the fry ball. Sometimes you can take a big bull minnow, or we like to call them snakehead destroyers. Snakehead destroyers. And you toss them in there right in that fry ball and you got a guaranteed hookup. They're not, you know, they're, that fish ain't going nowhere. It's just hanging there in that fry ball. They want it gone. When, and when you, they hit it and it doesn't leave, they're going to eat it. You know, so that's a good way to get a fish off the fry ball. And how long have you been seeing them here in the Blackwater? Since 2009. That's when I caught my first one. And let's say you went fishing a day in 2009 versus a, a day you went fishing today. What's the difference in your catch rate? I think the first time that I caught the fish, I actually caught three. And I was pretty shocked to see the fish. That same spot today, 10 years later, you can stand there literally and walk out with 150 fish if that's what you want to leave with. So tell me, have you seen any impact on the other fish in this area from the arrival of the snakeheads? Uh, definitely. I have definitely myself seen an impact. Um, smaller fish frogs, um, anything where the snakehead is predominantly at is definitely declining at an alarming rate. So we got a problem with this many snakehead in the water? Absolutely, absolutely. We got Eddie here from the Wolford store with us. How are you doing, Eddie? Good, how are you doing? Good. Now tell me, how has this whole snakehead thing impacted the store here? It's It's been a big impact. Um, we've, we've had a, a big influx of people coming here fishing for them. That's awesome. I'll bet that's been great for business. Has it also caused any issues around here? Um, it's been hit or miss. With it. There's been some good issues and some bad issues with it. Um, like it's been good for the local economy, but we've also had had some uh, small issues coming up, but, but nothing too major yet. And what Eddie's talking about, people, is trash. If you come fishing down here, please remember, take your trash out with you. Maybe pick up someone else's if you see it. And if you see any property, you're not sure it's public, it might be private, just stay off it. There's plenty of places you can access fish here, aren't there? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, plenty of public waters to fish here. Oh, yeah, he's on. Oh, good gravy. Now, that is not what I was looking for. Now, this is what I was looking for right there. You know, folks, one of the great things about fishing for snakeheads in an area like the Blackwater Complex, 
where they're clearly overpopulated, you have an unsustainable environmental situation, you don't have to feel one bit bad about taking home some fish. So, maybe it's time for a snake bait. Don't miss another cool fish talk video, click below to subscribe.